Today I've got an interesting problem. Interesting not because it's fun, but uh, because it's an actual problem with the Land Cruiser running, and that's pretty rare. I got a P0306 code, and the engine was running rough. Uh, I have a code reader, so I can read that. And uh, cylinder number six misfire. I think it's a coil pack because that is a common problem. Uh, so I'm going to go in kind of blind here. I've never done this or really looked at where they even are. Um, but I'm going to swap that coil pack with another cylinder and see if the problem follows the cylinder. If it does, then I'll put in a new coil pack and that should be it. So, first thing remove the big guard over the engine. And don't drop the screws if you can help that. Now I was banking on this job being so easy that I wouldn't get a white t-shirt dirty. We'll see if that was a mistake. All right, we got our big fancy piece of plastic off. Number six is the second to the rear on the passenger side. And it looks like the intake box right here is in the way. So that needs to come off. And that doesn't look too hard. Hose clamp, hose clamp. Hose clamp, hose clamp, hose clamp, hose clamp. And then a few mounting bolts. And another hose there. That's a pretty worthless hose clamp there. So far, so good. I can get most of the hose clamps off by hand. That's a good sign that this will be easy. Okay, a couple 10 millimeter hose clamps. Drill makes this kind of thing really easy. I didn't used to use a drill for a lot of this stuff, but I guess I'm getting lazy. Okay, there are those. You can see the coil pack for number two, I think, and number eight, but that's it. Okay, that might be all that's holding that on. Yeah, look at that. All right. Now try and do this without ruining any old plastic. The car's got 230,000 miles. Alright, coil pack is plainly visible. Throttle body looks fine. Let me take you off the tripod here. Actually, keep you on the tripod. Alright, so there you go. Those are the coils we're after. Number six is kind of hidden for you. Let's go right there. 
All right, number six is this guy right here. I'm gonna swap number six with, uh, doesn't really matter. I'll do this guy, which I think is number four. Just because they're both easily accessible right now. Does not want to budge. I don't want to pull the wires off. I put too much tension on the wires. Let's see if we can get this guy out. All right, get this guy out. Yeah. Okay. This is our potential bad one. Put this off to the side. Just so I don't get them mixed up. That would be a terrible mistake. Can't get that. I'm going to pry it up just a little bit. There we go. Just had to get it started. All right, so right away, I'm just going to move this over. Slide this right on over. There's not a lot of positive click feel on that spark plug. There is on the connector, which is good. But not on the spark plug, which is kind of weird. Okay, I guess that's seated. Good positive click there. Now, bolts go back in. Okay, I'm going to use the drill to put this back in. I'm going to put it on low speed and low torque. Because I'm going to come back with a torque wrench to do that the right way. Actually, I don't know the specific torque for those, so I'm just going to do an educated guess. and say somewhere around 10 to 15 foot-pounds. All right. Now our air box can go back in. And I'm gonna move the camera back over here. There you go, how's that? White t-shirt's mostly clean so far. I don't think it was a mistake quite yet. This one, this piece was the last to go to come off. So I'm gonna try and make it the first to go back on if I can. There we go. Okay, but I'm missing the clamp for that because it fell off. Clamp's good there, clamp, 
Now let's make sure we get our hoses attached. I'll make a mental note of that. I need a new clamp for that. That's not really doing anything at all. So far, this is very serviceable though. All the hoses are obvious, all the clamps are easy to get by hand. Okay, that looks really good. Now I've got two mounting bolts. I think we're done. bolt over here is actually the plastic's broken. Didn't even realize that when I took it off. So that one's kind of optional. Not holding much on back here. back there. That's why. Anyway. Slide this guy back in. Okay, now we're in business. the same torque value to these guys, not real tight, but definitely snug. If you notice I'm sweating, it's because it's June in Phoenix, and the garage is like 110 degrees. And I just got back from driving the Land Cruiser, so this engine bay is nice and hot. But there we go. I think I'm done. Double check the hoses. Everything's secured. Clamps are tightened. Alright. So I'm going to go for a drive and see if the trouble code follows cylinder or the follows the, the coil pack. And if it does, then I think that's my problem. And if it doesn't, then I've got another problem hidden somewhere, but uh, I'm just going to pretend that's not going to happen. Dropped a bolt. All right. So now I'll start it up, take it for a drive, see what we have. All right, so I had to go around the block. I had to clear codes first. I didn't clear the codes. It came up again. It looked like it was a fresh code, but it wasn't. So I erased the codes, checked again. Lo and behold, look at that. Cylinder number four, misfire detected. It was cylinder six. Now it's four. Um, that's the problem. That's it. So thanks to this Torque app and a $30 Bluetooth adapter, I know what the problem is. Um, you can't really tell anywhere on here. If I looked at ignition timing, you might see that ignition timing was a little off. Maybe. I'm not really sure. Um, probably pretty hard to detect if it weren't for the forums and that wealth of knowledge, knowing that that was a common problem. Uh, so, there we go. I know that it's the ignition coil now. It took 10 minutes of diagnostic, um, maybe 30, um, but that's it. And now I know how to swap it out. It's real easy. So I'll get a new coil and throw that in and solve the problem. So I determined that my problem was the ignition coil. Here is the ignition coil that I ordered off of Amazon for $57.
Part number there, 673-1303. It's a Denso part. This should be OEM. And uh, you can see legitimate Denso made in Japan. Uh, significantly cheaper than the OEM unit through Toyota. I think Toyota charges close to $90. Um, but there you go, brand new Toyota or uh, Denso coil. So uh, I'm going to install this now and then make sure that this fixed the problem. Uh, the bad coil is now in cylinder four, it was in cylinder six. I'll swap that out and make sure it's fixed. Okay, a quick comparison here, Denso versus the Toyota OEM. On the Toyota OEM, you'll notice that it's Toyota, it's got the part number, and then it's Denso. There's the Denso replacement, uh, exact same thing. No differences there. Connector is the same, everything is the same, good to go. Comes with the uh, seal grommet right there. And uh, that's it. So we're going to install this now, and that should fix our problem. All right, I just went for a drive. It feels great. I think that fixed it. Um, it's scanning for codes, no faults found. That cleared the code. I'm all good. So ignition coil, 57 bucks via Amazon, uh, which is quickly becoming my parts vendor. Um, they're carrying more and more, and I've got Prime, so everything gets shipped in two days. It's pretty nice. Um, I'll throw a link to that in the video description here. Um, I'm going to carry a spare one from now on, just because it came up out of nowhere, and if I'm out in the middle of, of nowhere, it'd be good to be able to change out. It's easy to change out uh, just with a 10 millimeter wrench. That's all you need, uh, at least for all of the banks on the passenger side. The driver's side, I'm not sure about. I would imagine it's pretty simple, um, but uh, there you go. Ignition coil fix on a 100 series Land Cruiser. Today I've got a interesting, nope, that's not right. 